What's going on, guys? So, I made a video not too long ago that I was very happy to do for you guys. It really expressed a lot of my personal experience in my life out there with you, with you all. Uh, anyone that has been on the channel with me or has recently joined, uh, there was a video I recently made about uh, if your job or something near you is making you physically ill or mentally ill, um, you guys, well, I saw there was a lot of views on there, and a lot of what I said on there is about what I'm going to be talking with you guys about today was life as a tech that a lot of people don't tell you, and society, whether it be a technician that you may know, you've come across, um, male, female, don't matter, <clears throat> um, there goes a lot of things with being a technician that I personally did not know, that I still know, that I'm still trying to figure out even to this day, that I think a lot of people don't really realize. And I'm just going to give you guys my personal opinion of it, as well as my own experience with it. And, um, and if you guys are techs out there and someone is a technician, you know, they can either vouch for this or, or disagree, that's fine, but... This is just my own personal opinion with things that I've been through as a technician. Um, you're going to have to deal, because I've been on both sides of the coin. I was a uh, representative for a company at one point, and I had to talk to technicians on the phone for a while, all over around the country. Then... Recently, last year, I was a tech for about six, almost six, seven, about six, seven months, and started literally right when it was getting hot in summer. And where I live, of course, in the south, uh, it uh, it, it gets hot. Uh, I know it gets hot all over the world, but here in certain areas, it does get hot. Um, where I live, you have to deal with hot, cold humid, different kinds of hot and humid, the weather changes, I literally call it bipolar weather, due to you never know what's going to happen, um, that's why I call it, because because you never know what's going to happen, um, and, and that's not a, nothing towards people that have that condition, um, I honestly had no idea what I was getting myself into, I thought it was going to be a great experience, I was trained for several weeks, in the classroom, out in the field with someone, and honestly, I learned more while being in the field with the one I was training with. He taught me a lot of different things. Then later on, when I went to a new company, of course, you know, everybody has their own tricks of how they do the job, whether it be quicker, whether it would be um, faster, more efficient, more quality, get the job done, get in, get out. Uh, there's a lot of things that a lot of people don't tell you. Um, they'll say, "Oh, you know, we're we're you don't go out past you know six or seven o'clock." That is a lie. Um, I do not care who tells you that. That is a lie because basically they will want you to get every job done until it it could be ten or eleven, and you probably still have one more job on you, and you still have to go. And I've seen it happen. It's happened to me. I've been at a job until almost midnight a couple times, and it sucks, especially when you do everything in your power to do something, and I've been in that situation. I've been in several situations where I had a situation, a situation where uh, the weather was really bad one day, really bad. It was going back and forth. The, um, the last, well, what I thought was going to be the last job. I had this um, this lady's house had caught on fire at one point because of electric um, lightning hit her her line into her home, and we had a certain way we had to make sure make sure it was that that she had a box, it was correct, um, that it was grounded. You guys don't know what that means. Basically, it means it needs to be grounded to something to where 
um, the box will not catch on fire as well as also the wires and also possibly the home because then you can get sued. Um, it needs to be to metal. It needs to be bonded to or grounded to something metal right next to the water heater or, or the water meter close um, on the house or and also onto the um, little clip that you use to connect. Now, how to do that <clears throat> and it was not raining. I was trying to hurry up before the rain hit and then next thing you know the rain hit. And it hit hard. And my equipment was malfunctioning. It was not good. I did everything I could think of. And then once came out there, tried to help me out. Even one, you know, she did everything she could. Then I had another buddy of mine. He tried to come out and help me. I was soaking wet. Didn't have no rain gear. My my meter that they gave us was not working. Wasn't even reading signals properly. And it was basically a dead tap of where I was. And basically what the tap is, if you guys do not know, it is on the top of poles and it is what connects your electrical outlets to your home. That that feeds the electric. Um, I was up there two, three times. And I want to say maybe it's like mm, 10 feet in the air. Um, or, or, or maybe thir- thir- maybe top 15 feet in the air. And it's wet. And you are, and I am so, all parts of my clothes, guys, like all parts, my, my work shirt, my shirt underneath, my <laughs> everything, socks, feet, legs, you, you name it, every part of my body was wet. And it sucked. And There'd be times they don't tell you, oh, hey, you got to crawl in your house. You got to go in the attic. Most of these houses anymore and nowadays, very, very, not very upkept. Um, you have to be very careful to not step through an attic. I've gone through one, and it was it was bad. I, went, I uh, had other people I know that went through it, and it was bad. And sometimes it's because the owners are not able to keep up with it or, you know, it's an old house and they're able, either not able to or they don't want to. And, you know, that's their prerogative. But a lot of people don't tell, tell you know, a, a, a starting technician that kind of stuff. They, they don't. They, they really don't. You literally have to learn as you go. And that's pretty much what it is. And if you don't have, um, if you're not built for outside, if, if you cannot work outside, then don't do it because you're all you're going to do is hurt yourself in the long run. I've worked outside and I worked in, indoors. I prefer either or. That's just me. But if you're not built to to go outside, then don't do it because you either hurt yourself, hurt somebody else in the process, do something you you don't want to do, and try to prove yourself. And again, guys, I had equipment malfunction. I had <clears throat> issues with my vehicle. Before I even left work, before it was actually issued to me, my ladder rack wouldn't even work. My sometimes my car wouldn't even start, but I always got blamed for something. Oh, you didn't say it enough or whatever. But when I'm talking about it to my supervisors or my manager, nothing was done. I. You know, I had jobs where I was told I did a good job. But then about a couple of days later, I'm getting my butt tore up for, oh, I didn't do this, or why didn't you do this, or, or so-and-so had to do this. And But a couple of days ago, you just said I was doing a good job. And now you're saying I'm not. And then you had the next person that started just like I did. Somehow he or she's doing better than me. But yet, I'm hearing the same thing, that they're having more issues than I am, or just as much issues as I am. And and, and that could be favoritism. And there is favoritism that goes on every workplace. I don't care who you are in this world that tells me there's no such thing as favoritism in the workplace, because there is. I've seen it in every single job that I've been to, and it is there. No matter what you are doing, who you are what you look like, whether you are a male or a female, it happens. It happens. 
there ain't nothing nobody can do about it. It, it happens. But I will guarantee you this. You're going to have to deal with it. <clears throat> I have to deal with it. I, I still got to deal with it to this day. There are some people that are not built for that type of work. And maybe I'm not built for that kind of work. But I, and as a tech, mind you, and I say it because if also if you're not tech savvy, then you are not going to do well in, in that business. You, you will not do well in that business. You will have issues trying to figure it out. You will have issues um, understanding other things sometimes you just won't figure out the issue there were so many jobs I had where I couldn't figure out the issue or I couldn't get into it because of my size I can go under certain houses because I couldn't get in there because it was so narrow or, or so low to the ground where there are some people I knew that were very you know, to a different body size, they couldn't even get in there. So there are certain jobs that just can't be done. Or I've had certain jobs where I had a job posted on me, but then about I have to go to one two hours away from me, and, oh, there's already someone in that area that can do it, but no, you're going to choose me when I'm two hours away, and I have about an hour to get there. That makes no sense. And I don't like that. But again, that is my opinion. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's the company. I do. I mean, because I know that a lot of companies do that. I know I've had that with another company I work for. Uh, there are times I didn't leave till way late at night and get up the very next morning. Because when you're working, technically, between a 13 to 15 hour shift and then you got to get up the very next morning at 6 30 or 5 30 in the morning to get you know your routine done if you have other things you need to do or you know you want to do you got to get that done get dressed go on your route and do your day and that is rough especially if you are just bone tired from that that previous day you just did and it is rough, very, very rough on the body, the mind, everything, especially if you're trying to do everything you can to prove to yourself that you can do this job, that to prove to your um, superiors you can do the job, as well as make sure you don't make no more uh, mistakes, or if you have made mistakes, don't make no more, or you're trying to be the best one for the employee of the month, or you know try to shoot out in, fr in front of the class, and you know, I made I made my fair share of mistakes, and, and I'm willing to admit that. But at least I can say I was man enough to state that I owned up to my mistakes, that I also learned from my mistakes. I did not hide from them. I admit to them. And you've had others that I know somehow skated by and did things they were not supposed to do. And, and those people shall rename nameless but I, I will guarantee you guys that it, it sucks when you try to do the best thing you can for a job and especially again if you're in a if you're a technician that installs um, anything you know me I installed internet I installed cable and a lot of people and, and this is what really irritates me is you get a lot of these people that are not don't know about anything about Internet about um, TV or about a TV. The technology in our world is constantly evolving. If you cannot keep up with that, then you need to have someone to help you with that. No matter what age you are, because I've come across all ages and they look at me like I'm from Mars and I'm talking something that, that is in another language. And I'm looking at them like, ma'am, sir, you know, and I have to go into complete detail on how to use something. <clears throat> when in certain areas, it shouldn't be that hard to use something. Other areas, yes, depending on what the system is, what the equipment is, I fully understand that. But it shouldn't be that hard for some people. And 
Sometimes it's just really hard to explain something to somebody when it doesn't look like they, they really care or they want to learn everything in the book and you only have a limited amount of time, so you've got to go to your other job. And that happens. And that upsets me. Um, I've had issues where they tell me, oh, hey, go, go over here when I just was over there and the issue was solved and you got people getting mad at you for something you didn't even do. And I'm going to tell you this also, guys. Everybody that has worked in that business or this business will explain to you equipment is going to have its issues on a daily basis. No matter what, there will be a day it will be working. There will be a day it's fine. There will be two weeks it's working great. There will probably be two weeks when it is nothing but pure chaos. That is what technology does. There is no such thing as a perfect type of technology. Whether it is a laptop, power, TV, Xbox, PS4, uh, cable box, Wi-Fi box or modem, um, wires, for that, there is nothing perfect in this world for equipment. I don't care who you are. And again, this is my experience of things that I've had to deal with. Um, I am talking about this because I just want to give you guys more of my experience of what I do know. Uh, I am in between with the tech business right now. I've kind of strayed away from that at the moment. Because I've gotten to be where I just I don't I don't mind it, but it's at the point where it's like a love and hate relationship with me, and I've had to stay away from it because I know I had to do it for my own sick of mind, my own health, and also to make sure I was not going to lose more of myself into that business because I've had to literally control not just my 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 temper, my body language my mouth on what I say to people because there are days where you know you you could be the worst having the worst day possible and then someone's having their worst day and, and, and sometimes it collides or sometimes you could have the worst day and you meet the most the most sweetest person and, and they can brighten up your day and, and that can happen and I've had that happen and I had the one time I knew where there was an issue was when I had to run a cable line. And, and let me tell you something about these lines, guys. They are not, like, weightless. They're, they're not. Like, you have two different kinds you can run that one is heavy and the other one can be heavy as well. And what you got to do sometimes to make it work can be a real hassle. I've had to run the heaviest one through three neighborhoods, and it was not like boom, 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 boom. It was like, okay, I'm going to go straight, then I'm going to do a curve to the right, then I'm going to do another curve to the left, and then i got to do this and work around trees and, and all this other kind of stuff. And sometimes it still don't work. Then also try to run a line across the street when you have, and it's a busy street, especially the time of the day, you've got people getting off of work, and, and, and there's just some just running over the line, running over that cable line. You can't use that because it, it, it's going to be destroyed. It's going to be cut. It's going to possibly get water damage in there if you, if even if you do run it, and there's no point to run it if it's already damaged, because then you're going to have to come back out there. Or somebody else is going to have to come back out there, and then you're going to get hell for it because it's like, okay, well, why'd you do that? And then that is when you know, it, it, you know, you just got to do what you got to do. But this is just an awareness video. I really just want to put more awareness out there than anything because. I honestly feel like that something needs to happen within this world of technicians. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys are part of the technician world, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you guys are new, let me know what you think. Uh, if you guys are technicians, let me know. If not, cool. If you are, let me know your thoughts about it. What issues have you had in the world, let me know. And I'll be seeing you guys on the next one.